Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to apply the mesh analysis method in the case where we have both a voltage source and a current source. Again, what we want to do is assign currents for each branch, but we can skip that step until the end. Let's just start with assigning mesh currents for each mesh. We have two meshes. Our first mesh has a current in this direction, I1. Our second mesh, a current in this direction, I2. Again, we can draw the direction of the mesh currents any way you like. It doesn't have to be the actual correct current. If we find that our answer is negative, that simply means that the direction that we chose was opposite of what it actually is, and that's quite all right. The next step is to apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to obtain equations. We have two mesh currents. We should have two equations, but we do have on that center branch right here, we have a current source, which means we are not going to include this. We're going to temporarily exclude this when we set up the equations using the Kirchhoff voltage law, which means we're only left with a single loop all the way around the outside. Notice that to the left side here, if I draw a dashed line in this direction, a dashed line in this direction, notice on the left side of the loop, we have a mesh current I1. On the right side of the loop, we have mesh currents I2, and there's no overlap since we have excluded that center branch for the time being. Starting at our lower left corner, again, you can start at any corner you like. I happen to like that lower left corner. Let's start from here, go around the loop. We first have a 20 volt rise. Here we have a, a drop across a six ohm resistor, six times I1, that's minus six times I1. Here we have a drop across a 10 ohm resistor, that would be minus 10 times I2, because here we're dealing with mesh current I2, and here we have another other voltage drop, minus 4 times I2, and then we come all the way around back to the original starting point, that must add up to zero. Combining currents, moving the voltage over to the other side, we can say that this is minus 6 I1, minus 14 I2, is equal to a minus 20, and since everything is negative, I can just multiply both sides by negative 1. This gives us 6I1 plus 14I2 is equal to 20, positive 20. Now we only have one equation and two unknowns. However, we have the center branch right here. If I pick this branch point up here and I add up all the currents that enter the branch point and all the currents that leave the branch point, I can find a relationship between I1, I2 and that current source in the middle branch. Let's do that. So at this point we have I1 entering, we have 6 amps entering, and we have I2 leaving, which means that I1 plus 6 equals I2. Therefore, I2 is equal to I1 plus 6. I can then take that and plug that into this equation, which then means that 6 times I1 plus 14 times I2, which is I1 plus 6, equals 20. Combining these, I get 6I1 plus 14I1, which is 20I1, plus 6 times 14, that would be 84, equals 20, which means that 20I1 is equal to 20 minus 84. 20I1 is equal to minus 64. I1 is equal to minus 3.2 amps. And once I know what I1 is equal to, then I can find out what I2 is equal to, because now I can come back over here. Since I2 is equal to I1 plus 6, that is equal to a minus 3.2 amps plus 6 amps, which means that this is equal to I2 is equal to a minus, oh, a plus, not a minus, a plus 2.8 amps. I now have I2 and I have I1. I can, and I know that the current in the center branch is 6 amps. Let's see if this is correct. 6 amps added to I1, which is a minus 3.2 amps, should indeed add up to 2.8 amps coming around in this direction, which means that the current in this left branch here, in this direction, I1, is equal to a minus 3.2 amps, a minus 3.2 amps, even though there's a voltage source that seems to drive current in this direction, the current in this branch is so large that it actually overpowers this source, this voltage source here, causes the current to, fl to, fl uh, to flow in the opposite direction. 
Here, if we think this to be I2, notice I2 is in the same direction as the mesh current I2, which means that this is equal to 2.8 amps in this direction. So we have current flowing in this direction, current flowing in this direction, coming together, and then current flowing up the center branch like that. That's how we use the mesh analysis method to, have, to work on circuits that have both voltage sources and current sources. And that's how it's done.